Hello everyone, today's topic is thyroid gland and its disorders. As usual, we'll start from the basic anatomy. So here is the neck and in front of the neck we have thyroid gland and it is in front of the larynx and trachea which is the windpipe. The thyroid gland itself is H-shaped or butterfly shaped. Okay. And it has two lobes, the right lobe and the left lobe. And these two lobes are connected with isthmus. Here you can see they're labeled. At the back of the thyroid gland, there are four small glands, which are called parathyroid glands. But we will not discuss about these glands in this lecture. We'll uh, have a separate lecture on them. This is the thyroid gland and these orange circles which you see are follicular cells and around these follicular cells there are small parafollicular cells as well. The parafollicular cells they secrete calcitonin and calcitonin is responsible for calcium metabolism. The follicular cells of the thyroid gland if we zoom in it looks like this. It has a cuboidal epithelium and inside there is a colloid material. This colloid actually contains the enzymes for the synthesis of thyroglobulin and from here all the biochemical reactions start for the formation of thyroid hormones. In this slide I'll explain you how thyroid hormones are formed and what are their functions on our body. So here is the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus releases TRH, which is thyrotropin releasing hormone. This hormone goes to the anterior pituitary gland and from there TSH is released, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone stimulates the thyroid gland and forms T4 and T3. Now I will not go into detail of all the biochemical reactions that are required for the formation of these hormones uh, but I will explain you briefly that what really happens. The follicular cells in the thyroid what they do is that they take up iodine from the body they also synthesize thyroglobulin. The thyroglobulin has tyrosine residues in it. The iodine combines with these tyrosine residues and this is how it forms T4 and T3. T4, which is also called thyroxine, is known as T4 because it has four iodine molecules. And T3 has three iodine molecules. Now T4 is actually the inactive form. It is basically the store. So T4 breaks one of its legs, forms T3, and this T3 is the active form which then does all the functions on the body. Now let's discuss the functions of thyroid uh, hormones which are many actually. So to begin with the most important function of thyroid gland is uh, metabolism. The metabolism of our body is controlled by thyroid gland, the BMR to be specific, which is the basal metabolic rate. Basal metabolic rate is actually the amount of energy our body burns out at rest, which is almost 60 to 70 percent. And um, that it is carried out by the vital organs, like the rate at which we breathe or the rate at which our heart beats. Fine. It is also responsible for fat metabolism and carbohydrate metabolism. So that's why it is responsible for lipolysis, glycolysis, and gluconeogenesis. Similarly, it regulates our body temperature and it is important for our bone growth and maintenance, for our muscular function. It promotes the normal cardiac output and increases the oxygen usage by controlling the basal metabolic rate. In the GIT, it increases the gastric motility and its secretions. And in the brain, it is also very important to maintain the normal mental functions. And finally, it uh, promotes the normal hydration of the skin. 
This is a very general overview of the functions I have given you. Um, but if you remember these, then it is very easy to understand the symptoms of hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. In endocrinology, the hormones work on a negative feedback mechanism. That means that the hormones which are formed, they control their formation by themselves. For example, in this case, when thyroid hormones are formed from the thyroid gland, and once they're done performing all their functions, they will send a signal back to the pituitary gland. They'll tell the pituitary gland that we're done with our job, so please stop sending TSH to the gland, otherwise it will keep making more thyroid hormones. This is what we call as negative feedback loop or negative feedback mechanism. And this is the normal physiology of the thyroid gland. So what did we learn up till now? That hypothalamus sends TRH. TRH goes to the anterior pituitary, releases TSH. TSH goes to the thyroid gland and forms T4 and T3. T3 performs all its functions, sends a negative feedback to the pituitary, and this is how the cycle continues. Now let's see what happens in primary hypothyroidism. What does hypothyroidism mean? Hypo means underactive or lazy. So the thyroid is underactive or lazy. So it is unable to perform its function efficiently. So if it's lazy, then definitely it will not provide the adequate amount of thyroid hormones. So T4 and T3 will be low. Now, because they're low, they, they will send a message to the pituitary that we're not enough to perform our functions. So please send more TSH so the gland can make more T4 and T3. The anterior pituitary then will send more TSH, more signal to the thyroid gland, trying to compensate the low levels of these hormones. So if you do the thyroid function tests in a person who has hypothyroidism, this is what you'll see. The T4 and T3 will be below the level of the normal range and TSH will be higher than the normal range because TSH is actually trying to compensate the lower levels of T4 and T3. On the other hand, what happens in hyperthyroidism? completely opposite because hyperthyroidism means that the thyroid gland is hyperactive, overactive. So the thyroid gland will make too much of T4 and T3. So then the body sends a message again to pituitary that there is too much of the thyroid hormones. So please slow down. So anterior pituitary will then send slow stimulus to thyroid gland that is low TSH. So it will slow down and it will send less signal to the thyroid gland so it does not make too much thyroid hormones. So how does the thyroid function test look like in primary hyperthyroidism? T4 and T3 will be high and TSH will be low. Easy peasy, isn't it? That's it for today, guys. I will discuss hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism in detail in the next couple of lectures. I hope you like this video, uh, so please share it with your friends and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Take care. God bless you all.